This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Central Police net two guns and two men after dramatic chase in Kingston. The police recovered two firearms and nabbed two men after a running car chase and gunfight on Friday evening that simulated scenes from a high-budget Hollywood action movie. Officers from the Central Police Station in downtown Kingston reportedly engaged gunmen who attempted evasive maneuvers to outrun the cops. But the law enforcers chased them along Norman Manley Boulevard and eventually caught up with them at a gas station in the vicinity of the Harbour View roundabout. At one point, one of the officers in chase reportedly pulled off a classic maneuver dubbed the Pit Maneuver or TVI, which caused the fleeing car to spin sideways and the police car then pinned the fleeing car against a utility pole. The men were then apprehended and the firearms were recovered. The pit is a pursuit tactic by which a pursuing car can force a fleeing car to turn sideways abruptly, causing the driver to lose control and be forced to stop. Why the police have closed the assault case involving Westmoreland MP? The police have now closed their assault case involving Westmoreland Central MP George Wright. A police source close to the probe said that both the woman, Tanisha Singh, and Wright have indicated that they no longer wish to press charges. The assault was captured on closed circuit TV. The Jamaica Constabulary Force has conducted investigations into a physical altercation between Member of Parliament George Wright and businesswoman Tanisha Singh. Following an exhaustive investigation, an interview process that conformed with law enforcement best practices and involved both parties, it is now clear that the investigation into the alleged incident has come to an end at this time. This as a result of the unwillingness of the parties involved and potential witnesses to participate in the investigation, as well as the poor quality of the video alleged to capture the incident. On the afternoon of April 6, 2021, both Ms. Singh and Mr. Wright made independent reports of a physical altercation that day. Ms. Singh made a report to the Anchovy Police, while later that evening, Mr. Wright made a report to the Ramble Police. Given the physical state of Ms. Singh, the police escorted her to a medical facility to ensure she received treatment. She was asked to return to the station after treatment in order to give a formal statement. To date, attempts at securing said statement have proven futile. Mr. Wright was asked to seek medical attention and return to give a statement, at which time he stated that he was unwilling to do so. On Sunday, April 11, 2021, a video began circulating of a physical altercation between a man and a woman. Based on the local knowledge of the police, the location was preliminarily identified and an officer was assigned that day to identify the source of the footage. On April 12, a preservation order for the footage was served on the holder of the footage and the Communication, Forensic and Cybercrime Division subsequently extracted the footage. On the afternoon of April 12, Ableton Foot made contact with the police on behalf of Mr. Wright, stating his willingness to attend an interview. Mr. Wright was interviewed in the presence of his attorney on Wednesday, April 14, 2021. Ms. Singh was interviewed in the presence of her attorneys on Thursday, April 15, 2021. In both interviews, the parties made it abundantly clear that they had no intention to pursue the matter further and would not cooperate with the police investigations into the matter. The poor quality of the footage and the unwillingness of persons at the location to cooperate with our investigations made it impossible to conclusively identify the persons captured in the video. However, even if the footage was of the highest quality, the police would not have been able to mount a case that met the basic evidentiary standard without the cooperation of the parties involved. The JCF reiterates its commitment to pursue seriously cases of domestic abuse, regardless of the individual or individuals who are alleged to have committed the act. However, in order to pursue such matters, the police require statements which are of probative value. Despite our best efforts, statements were not forthcoming in connection with this probe, and as such, the investigation has come to a natural end. However, 
If either of both parties wishes to revisit the matter at a later date, the police are willing to resume investigations accordingly. Corner shops divided on wholeness's COVID criticism. Some shopkeepers in Prime Minister Andrew Holness St. Andrew West Central constituency are seething from his comments about COVID-19 safety breaches, which have been construed in some quarters as classist. Inciting reasons for three consecutive weekend lockdowns, which commended on March 26, Holness noted that the failure by some, including those in the lower socioeconomic strata, to adhere to infection prevention protocols contributed to the decision. We have to lock down because the persons who are going to the corner shop on a Sunday or a Saturday or whichever day to buy the two pounds of rice, the big gill of oil, the half of bread, those persons are not wearing their mask. They are not social distancing, Hulness said, in response to a specific scenario raised about conduct at so-called corner shops during an interview with the news. The Prime Minister has since got flacked for his statement. What the Prime Minister say a foolishness. I'm just a pressure poor people from all angle. Dati Madu lamented Mark Cash, a selector who these days have to rely solely on the small shop he operates of Seaward Drive to eke out a living. The small business owner pointed to a bottle of hand sanitizer on a counter separating him from customers and a small bag of masks hanging over his head, which he sells to those who are not wearing one. He said he also complies with the curfews. As it turned five minutes to eight, police come lock me off at night time, he said. Mark Cash agrees that some people are unruly and not everyone abides by the law, but he is concerned about the reluctance of national leaders to acknowledge their own contribution to the spiraling COVID-19 numbers. Him says the Independence Day weekend spread the corona. I'll know him don't say it's the election, he noted, adding, they don't put no blame on themselves. Opposition leader Mark Golding has criticized Holness's remarks as evidence of disrespect to the poor and ventured into his own St. Andrew South constituency recently to hear the views of shopkeepers in a self-produced video. But Wayne Chin, who operates a small grocery shop near Olympic Way, believes the Prime Minister is being unfairly criticized for the statements being attributed to him. St. Andrew West Central has been a labor rights stronghold since Holness defeated Warren Blake of the People's National Party in the 1997 general election. Chin, a self-professed PNP supporter, said the Prime Minister and the MP was not being disrespectful to the poor. He's not lying telling, he said. All he said is that persons living in the ghetto areas like these, when they go to the corner shop to buy half a bread, pound of rice, Whatever, they don't tend to wear their mask, and I replay it over and I don't see nothing wrong with that statement, said Chen, who does not live in the community. He said that for the most part, customers have been compliant with the request to wear a mask to enter his shop, but there are occasions when a customer might disobey the rule. The shopkeeper said that he has had to refuse to sell goods to customers who are not compliant with the state-ordered COVID-19 safety protocols. But some residents are insisting that there is no need to wear a mask. Linton Thompson, a carpenter who was spotted at a patty shop off Olympic Way, has personally taken issue with Holness' comment. Me a laborette, but it bon me for them talk day, he retorted. Thompson said that he and many others in the community have not been infected by COVID-19, although they party and have a good time. It's not that I am not afraid, but COVID is mostly old people and people with underlying sickness get it. And from I have been here, I don't see anybody catch it that I know, he said. Pauline Jones, who operates a shop along Bay Farm Road, said there are occasions when customers do not wear their mask, but she generally adjusts the one on her face to indicate to them that they should be wearing one as well. Jones said that getting shopkeepers like herself to close at 8 o'clock at night is not an issue given the volatility of the community. Around here, if they even say 10 o'clock shop should shut down, by 8 o'clock we are closed, said Jones, who inherited the shop from her husband, who died last year. Please remember to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.